What's up, y'all? So if you were paying attention to the events of this weekend, you're not surprised to make a video on this, right? Because I just came back from West Big Moose, Miami, and I kind of fell off there just a little bit. I didn't win. Got third place losing the Sonics and Spargo, but I took out a lot of good players there. And this was a stacked event, right? Tweak, Light, Zomba, Paleo, Riddles, Spargo, Sonics, me, Mutes, Karama, Meister, like, and more. It was about a 400 person event and it was extremely disgustingly top heavy. So let's talk about this a little bit. Cause this event, this event was, I'm happy with this event even though I didn't win because I prepped a lot for this event and like the players and the prep really helped. Yes, I put Professor E.G. out, Rob, and then I fought Longo, a Rob from Europe. I don't actually know what his ranking is there, but I can tell you is that he was good. I kind of stomped him games one and two. And then game three, he started camping me a lot. And it was kind of difficult. Um, he won that one. And game four was like a last hit game. I was actually down one stocks to two. And I made a huge clutch to win that one. But yeah, that was just my pools. Um, it's funny. I had to fight either Longo or a player named Rob Slayer, who's also a Rob. So I just had pure Rob bracket. And... Especially after losing to Anathema at Rising Ground a couple weeks ago, I was actually like, oh, Rob. I was actually practicing a lot with Anathema um, online after that event. So I saw my bracket and I'm like, well, time to see if the prep helped. And honestly, I'm still not comfortable versus Rob. People think Rose wins the matchup and I'm like, it's Rob, man. I, I don't know about that one. Have you fought Rob before as a not top tier? What's up guys, you ever think, damn, the buzz. If you had some sick Rosalina merch, I'll buy that in a heartbeat. Well, guess what? I got exactly that. Made by Sorrow Wolf. Freaking badass design. Look at this design. And you can put it on a shirt. Put it on a nice sticker. You can put it on a mug. And if you have any ideas for things you'd like it on, or different color backgrounds, you let me know and I can make that happen. Check it out and enjoy the video. I was supposed to fight either Peebnut or Beastmo Paul. Beastmo Paul 3 0 Peebnut uh, the day before. And... You know, going into the set, I was not comfortable. So let me tell you right now. Rosa, hero. Just think about that matchup for a second, right? Heroes are throwing out all the spells and projectiles, massive sword, camping for buffs. And Rosa is just like, man, I want to camp you out. But hero is a better character for camping. But I've been practicing a lot of Minmin lately. Um, I've not been playing much Alamar because if you see my videos, you know, I think the character is just falling off crazily hard. So I was pretty comfortable going into this matchup as Mimmin. I start game one as Rosa. Um, when game two, I get destroyed. Like game one, I kind of mess him up. Game two, he just starts camping me harder. He gets a lead and I'm like, ooh. So game three, Minmin actually kind of beat him. And then game four was really, really close. I was up a lot and then he almost made the huge comeback. But yeah, I was very happy with this one because honestly, Beast Paul is one of these players where it's like, I know I'm better than him, but I know the matchup is like, his favor and my Mimin I'm not as comfortable with even if I've been working on her a lot so I was really happy I did like a little pop off when I beat him I actually like popped off like three times again because I thought I killed him and I'm like no he's still alive okay another kill move no he's still alive <sighs> that's, that's always the most stressful thing we think you have it and then just this person keeps living just die already let me move my bracket yes yeah, so a 3-1 there and then I got blessed with Meister and as my next match because he 3-0'd Yuno, aka uh, Chase. You know, it's crazy. I go into this match and I'm like, okay, it's Meister. I'm chilling, you know? So game one, me, Meister, and I, I noticed something. He's not playing his normal way. He's actually camping. He's spacing with bombs um, and just kind of like making me approach. He's hitting me for detailing Luma. This is actually something I've noticed a lot of good players are doing now is they're seeing me detail the Luma and they're like spacing their attacks on Luma very well. So I gotta work on a bit more of my counterplay for that. I know what it is, it's just executing, it's kinda hard. But yeah, so he's doing that, and game one he actually times me out. Technically it's two seconds left, but he times me out. He gets a lead at like two minutes in, and just runs away, and I'm like, I can't do enough damage, you're like a 70% lead. So yeah, he wins that one, I was like, I see you, I see you, I see you. So game two, you know what I do? I commit to camping him even harder then he can't me game one and I time him out. Three, I think he got a little bit tilted. It was actually crazy. He kept getting me to like 130 and then I'd kill him like 70 or 80 with something in the up air. I think I had him like two or three times that game. And the game four, I forgot what happened. I think I just kind of beat him. I think I just got like an early lead on like spacing and he couldn't really find the kills. Cause that's the thing about game watch is game watch is really good at getting damage. But if you know how to play it, the character isn't great at getting kills. So you don't care about your damage person. You care about living to like 150 with that stock and killing him at like 100 with rage. 3-1 on Meister, but I gotta say, 
he made good adjustments and keeps making these adjustments. I think there's a good chance next set we play, he could take it off of me. And then I fight Tweak. Now, story time with me versus Tweak. Um, one is that we generally have pretty back and forth sets. Most of our sets go game five. And at Damu, he actually reversed the reeled me. I beat his Diddy Kong 2 0 and Rose to Diddy. Go Sephiroth, reverse throws me. Um, I lost two games as Rose. I tried Olimar for a game. And I'm like, <sighs> And then we're talking afterwards, and I was wondering why I didn't start Sephiroth. Because I kind of farmed him game one of Damu. Um, and he told me it's because he was afraid of Mimmin. And at that time, I was not practicing Mimmin at all because I was in my, uh, I don't want to play this character phase. So I go, I went to the set knowing, all right, he is going to start Sephiroth, right? He reversed through on me. We go into the set and, you know, we do the button check. I always button check as Rosa because she's so technical with controls that, like, if button check with her is good, then my control is good, right? So yeah, game one, we go in, um, we do a double blind. I know he's going to Sephiroth. I go Mimmin and then I'm like, yeah, gotcha, gotcha, man. You had no idea this was coming. And honestly, I want to fight Tweak because I lost like that last time, right? I won my run back and I was practicing the matchup a lot. Like I was hella prepping to fight Tweak. Game one, kind of close game. Barely win it, Sephiroth Mimmin. Game two, he switches to Diddy as expected. Diddy Mimmin stinks. Um, I have no protos won it like at a summit like over a year ago. That matchup's really hard. So he kind of farms me, but I don't care. I got the counter pick war advantage. That's all I need. Just game three, we lock in that Rosa because you know, when it comes to counter picking, how it works is the winner picks their character first, and then the loser does. So I'm like, okay, yeah, we're going Rose into Diddy. And then that game was very close. It was much closer than Gamo, where I kind of farmed him in that matchup. It was last hit. Um, I, I want to say I cheesed him, but I definitely used Luma to break a lot of his combos and setups. That matchup is very good for Rosa, by the way. I like it. We barely win that game. Uh, I, I think the big thing I did that was very good is I made sure when I was in disadvantage, Diddy doesn't do a lot of damage with juggles. Like, he, he can't air to air well, he can't juggle well. So, I kept jumping out of, dis like, out of disadvantage, especially off the ledge, taking the forward airs, and basically making him get like 10% damage hits while getting back to neutral a lot. And then game four, he switches to Sephiroth. I'm like, okay, yeah, I'll probably lose this, and I go mid in game five. And then I just win. I was prepping this matchup just in case. Um, I zoned him out with Luma very well. I did a good job of not getting poked a lot. Like, I didn't get randomly forward aired, back aired a lot. Um, I made sure to respect his nair a bit more. And I just did a good job at that, along with not, like, getting too greedy in my advantage state and making him work for the kills. Because he knows, like, I was living to, like, 100-plus every stock as Rosa and avoiding his kill moves generally. So I barely won that, and I was, like, shocked. I was, like, I expect that to be a game five. Um, now, next time I play him, it's going to be an interesting mind game of, like, do I think he's still going to start Sephiroth? In that case, I can go for Mimmin as an easier matchup. I can go Rosa because I can win both matchups. It's going to be interesting uh, next time we play. Yeah, that was just topic qualifier, by the way. So then I had to fight Sonics. And Ugh! I so I play Sonics a lot on Wi-Fi. We practice all the time, right? We both know this matchup. This matchup is bullshit. It's not necessarily awful for Rosa, but it's bullshit for her. Because Sonic just kills me at absurd percent sometimes. Meanwhile, Rosa, her combos don't work on Sonic as frame to air dodge. And he's just generally like hard to keep in disadvantage. I, I got really unlucky this set. I'm gonna keep it real with you. There was like two or three times where like my like it, like combos didn't work properly moves and there was like i think it was game four i could have killed him with a forward air off stage and then he fell off forward air and it was so bad because that was like it's hard to kill sonic when you get that kill opening you need to get it but you can't you can't miss that chance and then he falls out my move um he gets back to neutral and then he just kills me and momentum is his and when you have a deficit for sonic oh, i worked so much in that matchup too i was thinking about like how to play it better but he just got me there um i was doing a lot of things like turning around to make it harder from the hit loom with spin dashes uh i was like doing a good job ledge trapping him honestly i missed a lot of edge guards because it's hard to hit sonic uh when he's recovering like he is a really big ledge snap um when he does like his air dodge his air dodge is like a triple jump um when he's edge guarding rosa he can forward air me he can homing attack me like he has some ways to kill me i, I feel like i played that one too uh, super well, but just, oh, that game four is going to be so annoying. And even that game one, I had a huge lead and he just got advantage saying I kept trying to land on top of the attacks like a dummy instead of just going to ledge. I'm like, what am I doing? What am I doing? But yeah, so that was that set. Down to losers bracket we go, man. And before someone asked, Mim and Sonic, no. I fit Muties. Now, normally, I beat Muties with Min Min. Uh, for the past, like, year or so, right? I lost as Rosa around a year ago. Less big, big moves. About two years ago, actually. And I said, you know what? I don't want to play Rosa Peach anymore. Let's go Mimmin. And so I beat him at, like, some... I think it was low-tier city 2022. 
I beat him in Japan at like the boot camp thing. And there, I think there was one other time I beat him as Mimin. But yeah, so I like that matchup. Mimin beats Peach. But he was doing a good job of avoiding my arm pressure by floating really high above me. But like if I want to like chase him with like a juggle, I have to commit to like double jumping at him or like up being at him. And I think I do have to just commit to like up being kind of far from him and like hitting him horizontally with arms. But I didn't do that, so he kept kind of floating out of my pressure, floating on top of me at the right times, and using platforms to escape me. And I also just didn't get many edge guards with Mimin. So that was good. And then the big thing is, when I was at the ledge, bro, I don't know what possessed Mutes. I swear there's a demon or something controlling him. Because, like, every time I was at the ledge, as Mimin versus his Peach, bro, I just got farmed. Like, there's, there's, there's nothing else to say. He reacted to all my options, he covered it well, he reset me constantly, and I'm just like... I considered saying Mimin after that loss, but I'm like, you know what? Time for the tried and true. Game two, I think I kind of farmed him. I forget. I think I farmed him game two. Uh, game, I think I just camped on the platform and he couldn't approach. Game three, no platform. He can approach. I can't, like, platform camp him without Luma. I just get destroyed. Game four, I believe I farm him again because I go underneath the platform and I'm like, hey, bro, I'm under the platform. Do you want to fight me? Do you want to fight me? Cool. Starbits. Cool. Up tilt. All right. Next game. And the game 5 was super close. I made sure to ban FD this time because I knew, okay, I can't let him go there. And so he goes town, which is what I was expecting if I didn't ban that. But luckily, I played to the center of the stage very aggressively. So he couldn't get those early kill confirms. I also did a good job of grabbing his uh, turnips and like Z-dropping them to pressure him. And it's really to kill Mutis, right? Like he keeps these stocks alive really well. But also Peach is really strong up close. So it's like if I press a button near her, she probably has that advantage. But you have to be kind of close to get kills, as Rosa. So, he lived pretty long, especially that last stock. But I did a very good job of using Luma as bait, right? Like, okay, throw Luma out. I know he wants to kill Luma. So, throw Luma out. Let him forward out Luma. Grab him. Dash attack him. Something. And in fact, even at the end, that's how I killed him, is I let him try and forward out Luma. I was super ready, and I up throw him at 200%. Which, yeah, that's one of those situations where it's like, we're both kind of nervous. But I think I have more composure than him. And Rose is much better at winning neutral than most characters. So I can kind of just like, when I know someone's at a percent where up throw can kill him, I can win neutral with very safe spacing with Starbits and Luma and like looking for these throw punishes, right? I was honestly expecting to beat Mutes a lot easier than I did. So I was like, shit, man. I got to play friendlies with him at some point. We even talked afterwards, like, you got to play some friendlies, bro. Those were good ass games. So we're going to practice at some point, probably. Oh, but yeah, that was a. That was a stressful set for sure. That was a set where I think we both were learning a lot about the matchup. Um, and especially the stages we want to go to, right? And I think next set will be very different now that we got to play it for the first time in a long while. And then I fight Shattuck. And I beat Shattuck at a Rising Grind like two weeks ago. But afterwards, we played friendlies. And those friendlies were back and forth. Like, I could tell he made adjustments. Like, he was making adjustments mid-set at Rising Grind. And I actually have a good record on him. But, like, every time I play him, it gets a little bit closer. I was going into this thinking, okay, I should be able to win. But I keep in mind he made good adjustments, right? And the his ability to adjust as a player shows. Because games 1 and 2, I kind of just beat him. I, I camp him out because, you know, I love camping with Starbits on the platforms. One thing I got really good at is he got really good at killing me and or killing Luma whenever I shot it out. And I'm not sure how I can deal with that against Corrin. I think I just can't shoot Luma that aggressively out versus Corrin. But I'm going to try to think of something. But he mostly camped on the platforms, waiting for his opening to approach. Uh, like, I got too predictive with my timing, right? Used to make star, but shot Luma out. In the meantime, I was trying to bait those out. I'm like, okay, I'm going to shoot Luma. I'm going to pull Luma back after shooting him out. You're going to go for the hit, and I star, but you. Or, okay, I'm going to read your aerial. I'm going to run up and try and, like, show grab. Or I'm going to try and catch your landing with a dash attack. And it was a lot of, like, it was a lot of small reads. It was very neutral heavy. Because I think the way we played it, I didn't give him opening for falling aerial combos. But he didn't give me opening for grabs, really. Or, like, my falling aerials. So, it was a super slow, grinding neutral. Almost a 40-minute set, I think. But I barely won that. Um, I was actually up 2-0, and then he almost reversed 3-0'd me. Because he started reading really well into just, like, how not to die. Like, I feel like I was winning the neutral for the most part. I got decent damage in my advantage state, but I couldn't get the kills there. I couldn't get the combo starters. And I couldn't kill him at the ledge. Like, he would live with the ledge way too long. I would try and force a kill at the ledge. And then he would just be like, nope. And then I'll like get reversed for it and die. So I gotta figure out something for that. Yeah, game five, last hit. Luckily, I'm super calm in these game five situations. Like I think most people panic. But once again, I think it's my character, but also my composure. Like 
I'm just so used to the situation. I can play those out very fine. Uh, definitely gotta watch out for next time. Shattuck. Shattuck had a crazy run, by the way. He beat Cola, Zamba, Riddles, and I believe MK Leo to get this far. You know, I was playing friendlies with Spargo at this event, and I was actually beating him in friendlies. I was going up pretty confident. Like, okay, I'm beating him in Cloud Rosa and Aegis Rosa. So I'm like, all right, I should be good here, right? The match starts. I notice immediately he's running away and charging limit, and I'm like, oh no, oh no, 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 no. In those friendlies, he was just holding forward and mashing. In bracket, he's holding back, charging limit, and. I gotta figure an answer out for this. This is so difficult. I'm not sure. This is bullshit. But yeah, uh, so game one, I, I had like, I was kind of down from the start. Like, I couldn't find a way to like get an opening and like put him in bad spots. Like, I couldn't get him off stage much. Couldn't get juggles going. I feel like I need to, I don't know. I play the matchup a bit and sometimes it feels fine, but other times it's really rough. Uh, Cloud Rosa. So, uh, I'm gonna try Mimin because I'm like, the Mimin is in practice. Mimin Cloud is like pretty even. Uh, it's just a matter of, like, can I exploit him off stage enough? But he did a good job of using the Hollow Bastion platform to, like, play, to get out of disadvantage well. And I think, honestly, I should have gone Hollow Bastion versus him. So I think that was a huge misplay. Because I kind of never got him in a compromised position. Meanwhile, that platform was used to wall me up very well. And then I kind of just got messed up as Mimmin. And then Game 3 went back to Rosa. Kind of just got messed up. It's, like, one of those sets where I think I was also playing a little bit burnt out for my bracket at that point. Because I got hit by a lot of random, like, aerials. Like, I just got, like, hit by something, and I'm like, I, I didn't think it was going to hit me. I was like, I thought it was too far for it to connect. So, yeah, it was just a lot of those little moments where I underestimated his range. I didn't react well. I was playing a little bit slow. And I think I was just out of energy. Um, which kind of sucks, because when you watch a set and you know, like, you didn't play well, it's like, what can I learn? But I'll do my best to see what I can figure out. I got to stop fighting Spargo at the end of these, like, runs when I'm doing, like, game five last hit matches. Because I have crazy stamina for Bracket. But I think Spargo, like, he runs through his Bracket super easily in comparison. So he gets, so I get to him and it's like, hey, I just went through, like, way too many stressful sets. Meanwhile, you're just big chilling. Like, he lost the Sonics before me. But, like, otherwise, it, I mean, I guess he had, like, a Game 5 with Cola. Lost the Sonics. But I think I had a more exhausting Bracket. So it's like, man, I, I need to find a way to be able to keep, like, my level of play going into him specifically because I feel like he's always like at 150% of bracket but yeah that was my run it was pretty good third at a super major so pretty happy with that and I will be at poor period in two weeks hoping I can do even better than this so I have one wish me luck and to some good ass campy ass timing people out as gameplay timing people out as gameplay peace